Hello, I'm Ilash Levinsky, and this is Military Mind. Armed conflicts, defense and security, land, sea and air. We've got you covered. The war in Ukraine grinds on. While neither Russia nor Ukraine have made any significant advances, Moscow's forces keep steadily pushing deeper into the Donetsk and Lugansk regions. President Volodymyr Zelensky attributed the Ukrainian losses of positions to Russian drone strikes. Authorities in Kyiv said Moscow had already used five of its new hypersonic Zircon missiles to strike the Ukrainian capital. Since this January, Kyiv has been targeted over 180 times by Russian missiles and drones. Continuing their assault on Russia's oil production capacity, Ukrainian forces struck 1,500 kilometers deep into Russian territory, with the drone attack starting a fire at one of the biggest oil refineries in the region of Tatarstan. Russian state media are reporting that several people were wounded, but alternative sources have not been able to verify these claims. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, Hamas terrorists managed to ambush an Israeli quick reaction unit, including an armored personnel carrier and seven dismounted soldiers. Israeli sources have not commented on the ambush yet. Further up north, the IDF has concluded its two-week-long operation in the biggest medical complex in the Strip, the Al-Shifa Hospital. IDF spokespeople claim that hundreds of Hamas gunmen were detained or killed during the sweep. Meanwhile, the Hamas-run health ministry says over 400 people have died as a result of airstrikes and fighting near the hospital. Israeli forces targeted a building next to the Iranian embassy in Damascus, Syria. Seven commanders of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps were reportedly killed in the strike. The president of Iran has said that Tehran will respond to the attack in the near future. Now, two years into the war, drone clips can sometimes look like aerial cinematography masterpieces with pulse-pounding action sequences. And this latest release from the Ukrainian Shadow Drone Unit is just that. See the folks from Shadow take flight and take the fight to the enemy. This is one ride you will not want to miss. By the way, have you noticed the Vishivanka drone logo? Classy. Now, another day, another Military Mind episode, and another clip from Ukrainian soldiers using drones to destroy Russian invaders. Coming right up is a look at the 72nd Mechanized Brigade catching Russian soldiers riding an ATV. Ride a soft-skinned vehicle with zero protection into a combat zone and, well, this is what happens. In the past two years, Ukrainian troops have shown themselves as having a great sense of humor. Even shooting regular drone footage, they always try to make it funny and even interesting. Whatever takes the edge of the everyday horror of war, right? In this clip coming up, we'll see another episode of Ukrainians wiping out Russian troops on the front line.
every member of the team will see in this next clip, from the 19-year-old recruit who enlisted to liberate his hometown of Donetsk to the seasoned recon operators, will confirm that in order to land accurate rounds on target, you first need to know as much as you can about that target. The Air Reconnaissance Unit attached to the Ukrainian 56th Motorized Brigade work closely with the gunners to provide them with real-time intelligence, allowing them to hit the enemy as accurately as possible, using as few rounds as possible. Let's take a look at this close cooperation in action. We are here with the artillery, artillery, tanks, 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 Із постереження, щоб пильно було і вміння управляти БПЛА. Із нашої роботи не було враження, що ми не сліпатимо. Це фурія. Цифрова. Неплохий борт. Ми на ньому працюємо. Привикли вже до нього. На Мавіках працював, потім на Фурії. Понравилось те, що вона може вразити добре противника, скажімо так. У них різні можливості. Для ближнього, скажімо так, дивиться, щоб не було прориву, місцевість. А це саме знаходить танки, артилерію. Вона може нанести зовсім більший урон, ніж Мавік. Я народився взагалі в Донецьку, хочу повернути своє рідне місто, ну, вигнати окупантів з нього. Ну, як війна почалася, я за це одразу в мене в голові така кінка крутила, що типу, я, я пішов, ну, був би вік дозволяв, мені 17 років було, і сидиш вдома, там думаєш, як воно піти, не піти, от чуть зрозуміло, що є якийсь страх. Получив відношення собі і прийшов сюди. Ну, мені просто подобається в плані професії, які тут є. Ну, поставив я берсі собі сушитись на буржу... ну, біля буржуйки. Ну, хтось вночі там, хтось дежурив, може, чуть їх присунув поблизу до буржуйки і просто підошва в них поплавилась. Я... Вони були 43-го розміру, а стали, напевно, 41-го. Я їх взути взагалі не міг. Пішов воювати прямо. Ну, щоб... Вдома було спокійно, не було цих обстрілів. Побудіться перебити врага і вигнати його з нашої землі. Це найголовніше. The Hammer missile was developed by the French company Safran 15 years ago. Since then, the platform, whose name stands for Highly Agile Modular Ammunition Extended Range, has undergone a number of modifications and improvements. The main idea behind the development of the missile was to design a conventional bomb which would be as accurate as possible and have the longest possible range. The AASM Hammer is compatible with a variety of standard bomb bodies from 125 kilograms up to 1000 kilograms. In this clip coming up, we'll see the hammer, well, hammering Russian positions in the village of Tonyanki. The footage was captured by a Russian camera. And with this brief glance at the front lines, we end this episode of Military Mind. Please stay with us here on TVP World. More latest news and updates.